So what are the main conceptual frameworks of the digital age? Well, let's start with the framework we use to structure this entire specialization, uh, digital technology and social change co-evolve. So we have three dimensions to it, a technological dimension, a social dimension, and then the dimension of, of shaping this co-evolution towards a desired, towards a desired, like, oh, well, what do we call human progress? Uh, we evolve into a certain direction and we assume that we humans have some agency in it. Um, so that is this third dimension. So that's how we then came up with our framework. And I wanna show you actually where it comes from. So we have the hardware, the software, we said, then we have the human in the loop and we use this more like the yeah, human is part of the infrastructure. We use this infrastructure in order to put part of the information, communication and knowledge processes into electronic networks. That's why we temporarily right now put the E in front. And in this specialization, we will look into some of these applications in more detail. Uh, so example, social media and, and business. And then we have this third uh, uh, dimension to it that we will look at more in, in later sessions where we talk about how we shape this ongoing evolution. And since it's an evolution, you have basically two things you can do to it. You can reinforce change if you like it, or you can reduce change. The technical terms is positive and negative feedback. But we won't even go there today because that goes, this is for later sessions and later lectures. Today, we will only focus on these two dimensions on technology and social change. And let's start actually much easier from an engineering sense. Uh, we just talk about the hardware uh, and the software and then the different applications. And we also won't distinguish between the different applications for now. So. What engineers do is they usually take my cube and they turn it around. Actually, no, it's actually their framework. I turned it around. But uh, so we, we start with the hardware at the bottom and then the software and then the applications. And that's how these frameworks are usually built, these conceptual frameworks. You start with the cables, uh, the real uh, infrastructure. Then you go more towards the software that's running on it, running on the computers and on the networks. And you go all the uh, way up to here to the, to the applications on top. So maybe the oldest model there that's still much used, uh, maybe the most used, is TCP IP, uh, developed by the Department of Defense. And you have IP in there. So that's the internet protocol. And uh, you can see that starts with uh, basically that's the that's what you can touch, the hardware, the cables, the links. Think about it. Think about a mail system. So first of all, you need the paper and the envelope and you need the pen in order to write a letter. Then you interconnect these different pieces. You need a, an infrastructure where you want to send mail around. There has to be, well, we came up with the internet, the net between the other networks. And then you need the transportation. So once you have the layers, you have to put it on something, a Pony Express or a car or a transfer or an Amazon Prime delivery truck. Like there has to be, it has to be transported. And then of course, there's the application, there's the content that's inside the envelope. And there's written something and that can be written in English and Spanish and Mandarin on, or in, in German and, and you have that written. And then you have to give it also, bring it to somebody who can actually decipher that. Uh, and that goes in these application protocols. One famous one that you always see present is called HTTP. When you open a URL, a web page, you still see that. So that comes from, from this kind of framework. It's still omnipresent. Around the same time, the engineers went a little bit more fine-grained. So that's uh, 84 we are now, 1984. And they made seven layers out of it. And if you work in a company um, or in any organization and you hear engineer, engineers talking about that quite a bit, uh, the layer number five, layer number two, and so forth. And, and this, the, the, I, uh, the OSI model uh, breaks that apart. So this link layer here is basically split into two and the application layer here is basically split into three. Um, and that's how they, that's how they line up. I will not go much more in detail uh, about this, but I invite you to check out these videos. Please check out these videos and learn more about especially the, the, the OC model uh, and the TCP IP model and how they are used in order to, to structure uh, 
uh, digital, digital realities. Jumping 10 years ahead, there's another model that is conceptually extremely similar and that has been used in order and is still being used a lot and referenced a lot in order to bring companies and organizations into the digital age. And you will hear people also, especially managers that are in the process of digitalization, of digital transformation of their companies, use this reference model a lot. It's the ANSI ISA 95 model, the ISA 95 model from the International Society of Automation. And conceptually, it's very similar again. We start with the hardware, the wheels and the pinions, the shafts and gears mounted onto the arbor of the digital of the digital infrastructure that you have here. Basically, what's rattling in the company it doesn't have to be a manufacturer. It can also be a service. For example, you can take pictures, produce music, or do accounting. That's basically the production level of whatever you produce. And then you install sensors. Now these sensors can be cameras and, and can be microphones uh, that take data information about the process, but they can also be more traditionally, it can be a report. People have to write reports. If you work in a company, you have to write report and to share with your with your colleagues and with your superior. So that is this layer where we basically create a representation of what's going on in our organizational processes. This then is used in order to get up to the management system. So then here we are already in the management system, we try to synthesize the data or the processes that's going on. You can think about it, you, you create a graph and put it into a PowerPoint presentation or a slide deck. Here in the Bay Area and in, in Silicon Valley, we always talk about slide deck. So, it's, so if you work there, a lot of your day, you will produce and listen to slide decks of other people. This is the, the interoperation management uh, layer. And then it goes all the way up to strategy, the business logic and the logistics. And the ones on top then take the decision and they have to like the information has to go filtering up what's going on in the company and what's our strategy. Again, I'm not going to go into detail on it. I invite you, please check out these videos here. Um, watch them in order to learn more about, about the, the ISA 95 automation model. In general, these models uh, of the work, they work in three different, you can, we can coarse grain that into three different sections. So here we have the hardware, as I said, the, the gears and the shafts, the, the, the clock wheels that are, that are basically running. Um, and this is then produced into an interface. The interface connects the physical world to the world of information. Um, so you start here with sensors and then you bring it up. Dashboards are very important in organizations. Slide decks are very important in organizations still. <laughs> now you can automate that. You can bring it from the hardware over the sensors directly into an artificial intelligence. And the artificial intelligence then can take decisions in order to go down. And some sectors are already doing that. For example, the electric grid is mainly managed by artificial intelligence. So that comes from sensors all the way down and then the artificial intelligence takes decision on it. I mean, you know, this, this information process, I couldn't handle that. So that's why we automated that, these kind of decisions, where does electricity go at what time, quite some time ago. And then, so this is the software layer and you can integrate that a lot here and a lot's going on there, especially with, with the rise of artificial intelligence. And at the end, you bring it from the management to the planning all the way to, uh, to, to, to you know, the, the leadership, the strategy that takes decisions. And especially in the artificial intelligence paradigm, and we'll talk more about that later in a little bit during this session, uh, this becomes extremely important. You need to know where you want to go. You have to align your artificial intelligence. And there, that then goes all the way down. And that has implications of what kind of software you're producing and how the hardware is computing. So that's the artificial intelligence alignment problem. Even so, this framework is, is quite you know, quite old from the 1990s, it's still extremely useful. So then if you go back to the cube, that's actually, you know, that's actually where I stole it from. That's where you have it. Now we can turn that around again. And we start here with our hardware, software, and then we bring the human into the loop. So that's the management, that's the planning, that's the strategy, that's the user of, uh, of the technology, which then is used in order to digitalize and algorithmify different aspects of society in the application layer. Now I already hear you saying like, whoa, 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 well, that's like 
well, I thought this is like a cutting edge course and you tell us stuff from the 80s and the 90s, that's like so last century. These old professors, it's true. <laughs> it's the same as with all the old classics. If you want to understand modern music, it's really useful to be, be aware of the classics, not only classical music, but classical rock and pop and, and R&B music in order to understand that. It doesn't mean you can understand everything of, of modern if you don't know the classics, but it helps you to organize things a little bit and to see, to see where they come from. And the same here. So as a footnote, for example, let's see how this digital architecture is reflected in the five most valuable companies in the history of planet Earth, these five companies dominated the world for the last decade or so. Let's, so let's look at Apple. What does Apple actually do? Well, it sells the iPhone and it has the App Store. And in the App Store, Steve Jobs, back in 2001, actually adopted a 30% tax, actually a commission that came, like historically, that came back from arcade systems in Nintendo that used that money to create video game consoles. But Steve Jobs adopted basically this, this commission and charges it on the App Store. Now, you have a 30% tax of what's going on in the world, and, and you have half of the, of the phones in the United States, worldwide 30% of the smartphones. Well, that, that is economic power. That's money, right? So let's look at the second one, Google. Well, what does Google? Yeah, it has the search engine, but what else? Oh, it has the other 70% of the mobile phones in the world. So worldwide, the iPhone in the United States, it's half. Worldwide, it's about 30%. And Android has the other 70%. So these two companies basically dominate the mobile phone market. And there also Google has the Play Store, where again, there goes a 30% commission, which is historically justified. And yeah, you know, that... Well, that's where the money, where the money is at, right? It comes from, from these two lower layers of the digital framework. So let's look at Microsoft. Where, what does Microsoft do? Well, well, yeah, sure. We all know that. That's here in the software layer. What does Amazon do? Yeah, Amazon sells packages and stuff, but what does it do in terms of the digital architecture? Oh, the cloud services, of course, Amazon cloud. So that is also in here. And then we have Meta. Facebook. And okay, so they have an app, but what else? Well, Mark Zuckerberg also understood what actually goes on, what's going on here. And that's why he rebranded Facebook as Meta, because he wanted to get his foot into the metaverse and take advantage of getting a foot into the hardware market. So they took over Oculus. These are the VR, the virtual reality classes, which is basically a hardware. So you can see, you know, all the big companies, actually, they at least they're trying or they're having a big foot here on the lower levels of the digital framework. And that's how they dominate our digital reality. So these frameworks, I invite you to study them because they're extremely useful. They are still much used in the industry, in organizations when they talk about the digital paradigm. But I also want to say it's true, they are evolving. One of the things especially evolving is key on top with the digital applications. We go deeper and deeper as, as artificial intelligence is also automating a lot of these processes. We can almost like, maybe I should add another layer onto it. And that's what people do. So this here is from my German friends. Uh, they call this Industry 4.0, this additional layer. Das Referenzarchitekturmodell, der Industrie 4.0. Guys, only in German. <laughs> Can you have words like this? And it actually doesn't make sense, trust me. It's the reference architectural model, one word, <laughs> that they came up with in the German industry. And, you know, it's German engineering. So the Germans pushed ahead and pushing that forward. And you can see these frameworks. I'm not gonna, gonna go into detail of it, but in your job, you, you hear a lot about that. You hear people talking about smart production, smart industry, the connected world, the smart factory. And so, and but basically this additional layer is basically the ISA 95 in, in different words, in different colors. So once you understand that, you already have that. This here is also very similar. You already saw that that's the asset that you can touch. And here's the business layer. And they introduced another dimension here that has to do with time management because they're focusing on digital twins. People talk about digital twins more. That's a digital representation it has to do with the sensor. You take a sensor, you, you sense reality, also comes from the previous models, and you basically create a digital representation of reality on your platform. So anyways, um, I'm not going to go into these modern models because 
as soon as this video is up and running, there will be other modern models produced. But uh, I just say that because like, yes, it's true, the old professor and the models from the last century. But these concepts are still uh, extremely useful. And basically the idea is that you have hardware, software, the human in the loop in order then to have information, communication and knowledge in these digital networks that help you to be applied that that allow you to apply it to some kind of social purpose and that's where these frameworks come from